Okay. Hey, what is up, Cynics? Today I'm gonna to be going over my personal favorite settings to use while live streaming on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook gaming, it doesn't really matter. This is going to translate over to all of them. These are gonna be the best settings to use while streaming. This is what a lot of people have been using in 2020, it seems, and it's been working out pretty well for Blake and I. For those of you who do not know, we make content every Monday and Friday, and then on Wednesdays we do live stream on YouTube. And these settings have been pretty solid for us overall. And then I am gonna be following this up with actually how to get started streaming on YouTube through OBS. So it's gonna be kind of a two-in-one video here. For those of you who are just here for the settings, I'm gonna start out with that. And if you wanna learn how to actually live stream on YouTube, if you've never done it before, stick around. I will be showing you how to do that as well. So first up, we're gonna to wanna to open up OBS. I already had open here. If you don't have OBS already, I highly suggest going to download it because you need it for what we're about to do. And I will not actually be going over how to set up these scenes or sources here. So if you're brand new to OBS, I highly suggest downloading it and finding a good video to set up scenes and sources because that is step number one in order to actually get going when it comes to streaming. So I don't wanna waste too much time, let's just jump right into it. So you're gonna to wanna to go over to here to settings. It's gonna pop up the setting window. Now I'm gonna blow this up so you guys can see it a little bit better here, so bear with me. All right, so if you see right here, there's gonna be seven tabs and we're only gonna actually go over a couple of them today. So this general tab is purely for kind of personal things that you want your OBS to have as far as setup goes. I keep mine on dark mode, but there is other colors as well. Now this is all purely personal preference. I, per I prefer dark mode, you definitely can use whatever you want. But when it comes to streaming, you're gonna to wanna to go over here to the left, the stream tab. That's the first place we're gonna start out and you're gonna see a few options here. So first one's gonna be service. As you see, mine says YouTube slash YouTube gaming. Now, if you click on that, that's what's gonna show you all of the different streaming platforms, the Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, whatever one you want to be streaming on, that's what you're gonna to wanna to select. I'm gonna keep mine on YouTube since that's what I do personally. And then down here under server, I'm not gonna to touch that at all. It's gonna auto fill it for you. I would not change that. And then the stream key here is actually going to be really important to actually get your stream to function properly. I will come back to this. We don't need it right now, but I will come back to that. And then over here, you're gonna to wanna to go to output under the stream tab. And this is where your main settings are gonna be set to make your stream run smoothly. Now up here it says streaming, recording, audio, replay buffer. We're just gonna do the streaming one today. If you guys wanna see a recording one in the future, I can walk you through that as well. Just let me know down in the comment section. Also, just so you're aware, since I'm recording this video for you, a lot of these options are grayed out, but I will walk you through them either way. So first things first, we're gonna to want to, under the encoder here, make sure that you're set to the NVIDIA NVEC new. Now there's gonna be probably one or two other options for you that pops up. But the NVIDIA one is what's going to basically run your stream through your graphics card. The other option is basically gonna run your stream through your processor or your CPU chip. Now most commonly that is not gonna be the case for, for most people. You're gonna to wanna to keep it on that NVIDIA. And then this box underneath it here, the Enforce Streaming Service Encoder setting, you're gonna to wanna to check that. Basically, that's going to limit your stream bitrate to what the actual streaming platform prefers. So it's not gonna let you go over that bitrate, which may cause issues on your stream. And then Rescale Output, that should just be whatever your resolution of your monitor is. So mine's 2560 by 1440. Uh, I'm not gonna to touch that. And then down here, this is where it gets a little tricky with the bitrate. Now under rate control, I'm gonna do CBR, means constant bit rate. There is a, also CQP, that's gonna be best for recording. And then these other two here, VBR and lossless, I don't ever touch those. Uh, I feel like most people don't use those. And then if you go down one more, you're gonna see bit rate. Now I like to put mine at 6,500. If you go anywhere over that, it's actually not really doing anything because most streaming platforms will cap you out at a certain bit rate either way and let's say you put 10,000 there, it's actually gonna end up compressing or throttling your stream down to whatever you know Twitch or YouTube or any other gaming streaming platform is limited to, they're gonna compress it down to that. So it's actually gonna do more harm than good. And if you go down to keyframe intervals, I like to set that at about two. 
and it seems like a lot of other streamers out there also prefer that at two. And from my understanding, it means there's only really ever gonna be like a two second delay from what you're streaming to what your viewer is seeing. And you just wanna make sure that it's above zero because if you see here, zero equals auto. So it's actually gonna put an auto keyframe interval, which uh, based on the research I've done could be seven to eight seconds of delay, which nobody really wants that in their stream. Now under that, you're gonna see preset, minus set to max quality. Now I'm running a RTX 2070 Super, which is a pretty decently powerful GPU. Now this is gonna vary computer to computer based on what kind of graphics card you have. Now, from what I've seen, if you have an RTX 1060 and above, you should be able to run max quality, but you might wanna kind of mess around a little bit with it. Uh, if you have a lower graphics card, I'd maybe try it on max quality. If you're still having issues, drop it down to quality. It should work fine for you. But for my 2070 Super, I'm gonna run under max quality. And then for profile, I keep mine on high. Now underneath that, you're gonna see look ahead and cycle visual tuning. I like to keep both of those checked and it seems like a lot of other people do as well. Basically, it's gonna help with high motion games to keep it as smooth as possible. And then GPU, I leave at zero, that should be the default. And then max B frames. This is kind of based on whatever game you're playing at the time. So I leave mine at one, because the lower the number, the better it is for fast paced games. So if I'm streaming Call of Duty, for instance, I'm gonna want a one there to keep it as smooth as possible. But let's say you're playing like Hearthstone or something where there isn't really a whole lot of action. You could probably bump that up to like two or three. You might get a little bit better of a stream out of it by doing that. And then the last tab we're gonna wanna mess with in OBS is video. So if you click on that, you can see four options. Once again, it's grayed out because I'm recording this right now, but your base canvas resolution is going to be whatever resolution your actual monitor that you're streaming on is. So mine's 2560 by 1440 as we've went over before. Now underneath that, you're gonna see output scaled resolution. I have mine at 1920 by 1080, and that is a pretty common setting, I would say. But I've actually seen a lot of people streaming under 1600 by 900. And apparently, visually wise, it's almost identical to 1920 by 1080. And it is a little less stressful on your computer, so it can improve the quality of your stream. So if you're having trouble with the 1920 by 1080, I would maybe try going down to that 1600 by 900. And then as far as the downscale filter goes, I do the Lanxos sharpening scale 36 samples. Once again, that is pretty much the standard it seems like for streaming in 2020. And then of course, common FPS values. This one's gonna be up to you. I keep mine at 60 because once again, I'm playing Call of Duty or other fast paced games. So I want as much frames as I possibly can get. So I, I leave that at 60. Now, if you're not playing a very high paced game, you could try 30 and it might be fine for you, along with being a little less stressful on your computer and your stream once again. And once you have all those settings input, you just come down to here to apply. Once you hit apply, you can back out of that. And basically after that, you are ready to stream. So now I'm gonna actually jump over to YouTube because I said I was gonna show you guys how to set up a YouTube live stream if you haven't already. Now to do this, you do have to have an existing YouTube account already. And for those of you who already do have a YouTube account and have uploaded videos in the past, you've probably already seen this before, but up here it says create a video or post. So you'll click on that and it's gonna give you a couple options. It's gonna be upload video, go live, uh, and then create a post that's only for YouTube partners, but uh, most likely you have these two showing. So you can just go straight to go live here. Once you click on that, it's gonna load over to all of the settings that you can set up to start your live stream. But as you can see right here, it says connect streaming software to go live. That's where OBS and that stream key are gonna come back into play in a little bit. But first you're gonna to want to go to edit right here. Once you click on that, this is how you're gonna edit everything as far as what the public is gonna see before they click on your stream. So you can create a title and set it to public. Uh, there's a couple other options. I don't know why you ever do either of these for a live stream, but they are there. And then down here you can do a description, throw some hashtags in there if you want to, uh, what kind of category your live stream is gonna be. You can put what game you're playing. Enable monetization will be there if you are a YouTube partner once again. 
Uh, you can go right here and actually change the thumbnail. So I have a, my custom thumbnail in there as well. And then a big one for YouTube right now is you have to select yes, it's made for kids or no, it's not made for kids. Now I was live streaming Call of Duty. So of course I put no, it is not made for kids. And then pretty much after that, you just hit save. That's going to save everything that people are going to see while you are live. And then that brings us down to the bottom portion here. Now these three tabs, you can use them while you're streaming. Uh, it shows basically some analytics, stream health, viewer activity, stuff like that. The stream settings are what are important. So under stream key settings here, I leave it at default stream key. That's what most people do as well. And then down below that is your stream key. Now it is encoded. You do not want people to know your stream key or they will be able to stream on your channel. So keep that private guys. And then under that, your stream URL, that's gonna allow you to copy and share your live stream on other platforms. And then backup server URL, I don't ever really mess with that. So this is the part where you're gonna want to link OBS and YouTube together. So under stream key here, you're gonna wanna hit copy. It's gonna copy your stream key. You're gonna come back down to OBS, open that back up. I'm gonna go back to settings. Blow this up a little bit again for you guys. And that's where you're gonna go to stream right here. Stream key. It's gonna highlight that and paste in the new one. Oops. Paste in the new one. Come down here to apply. And now your stream key from YouTube is linked to OBS. All you have to do to get started is hit start streaming right here. If you wanna stop your stream, you stop streaming down here. It's as easy as that. Other than that, there's a few other little settings. So uh, stream latency here. Uh, normal stream latency is the default. And then there's low latency, ultra low latency. Basically, this is going to affect how long it takes from you actually saying or doing something on your stream before your actual viewers see it. So I like low latency so that I can actually communicate with my viewers almost in real time. Now, if you have a little bit of a weaker PC, normal latency might be your best option. Otherwise, if your PC is pretty strong, you go with an ultra low latency. It even says right here, uh, best for real time interaction. Then up here to additional settings. None of these are really that important. Only one I keep on is enable DVR. That's gonna record your stream while you're actually live streaming. And then it directly uploads it to your YouTube video as a regular video. So I really like having that feature for people that didn't get to catch it live. They can go back on your channel and catch it that way as well. Otherwise, none of these other things are really that important, very unused, but uh, by any means you can use them if you want to. Other than that, you have your live chat over here. This is where you're gonna see all of your chat come through from your viewers. And that pretty much wraps it up as far as starting and stopping a stream on YouTube and fully customizing that whole setup. Pretty simple stuff. Anyways, everyone, I hope that this was somewhat informational for you. I know it wasn't that exciting of a video, but I'm just trying to help you guys out here. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future on OBS tutorials or just stream tutorials in general, drop a comment down below. We always get back to everyone. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And of course, go check out some of our other content as well. And never forget, if you wanna see anything from tech, games, movies, to literally anything nerdy in between, Make sure to subscribe to Digital Cynics. Peace.